Hi everyone. There's a reason why cold calling is steadily losing its allure with a B2B sales method. And that's because it's getting harder and harder to connect with prospects using the phone. Now back in the good old days, it used to take an average of about three cold calls in order to reach a key decision maker. While nowadays that average is around eight. And what happens when you finally do connect with a decision maker? Well, good luck with that, because a study done by Leap Jobs found that only 2% of cold calls reached actually resulted in an appointment. Not a sale, just an appointment. That means about 98 out of every 100 sales calls are a waste of time. So basically for most of us, this means cold calling is getting even colder. So let's back up for a second and ask ourselves a tricky question. Why has cold calling become more difficult? Well, back in the good old days, it was a simpler time. You know, information just wasn't readily available as it is today at your fingertips. And to keep up with trends and opportunities, you know, business people were more open to cold calls. Because if somebody could offer you stationery at a cheaper price, this was a good way to learn about it. Nowadays, we have so much more information available at our fingertips that our dumb phone has now become our smartphone. And in the digital world of today, where roughly maybe two thirds of B2B buyers make their decisions via online content, the rules of sales prospecting has changed. So for example, the International Data Corporation found that a whopping 75% of business to business buyers use some sort of social media to make a buying decision. And 90% of C-level executives say they will never reply to a cold call or cold email. Now, I don't want to sound all doom and gloom when it comes to cold calling. However, it has gotten tougher over the years. But despite this, there's still people out there that are getting good results from it. So in this video, I want to share with you some of the best tactics that they are using. So the first one I have for you is just to stop cold calling. Now, I know what you're thinking. What's he talking about? And I'm not really saying you should stop making prospecting calls. I'm saying you stop making traditional cold calls. So instead, you should try and warm up your calls with a multi-touch approach. So before you make your calls, you know, warm up your prospects, you know, through email drip campaigns, you know, LinkedIn in mails, or maybe some sort of video messaging in as well. And this way, when you do make your call, it's going to seem less cold because the prospect should have gotten some value from what you've been sending leading up to it and making it much more likely the call will be effective and ultimately successful. Now, the second one I have for you is pick a better time of the day to call. Now, according to the Kellogg's School of Management, the best time to make a cold call is between 4 p.m. and 5 p.m. Now, the second best time is between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. And the worst time is that slot between 11 and 2 a.m., which of course is around lunchtime. So reach your prospect either first thing in the morning or last thing in the day. Research also shows that Fridays are officially the worst day to make sales calls, while Mondays are no good either. So Mondays is understandably so because it's the first day of the week and most people are trying to make a tally of, you know, what lies ahead. While Fridays, on the other hand, you know, you're kind of wrapping up your work's week and you really don't want to spend any more time on the phone talking to strangers. So the best thing to do is use all that time in between to focus on new ways of turning your B2B leads into B2B sales. Now, the third one on my list is get an introduction. And there should be no surprise that three quarters B2B buyers prefer to work with recommendations from their professional network. So instead of continuing making cold calls, you know, you should be spending more time talking to existing clients and getting introductions from them. You know, happy customers are a great source of these and a fantastic tip so you can get as many as possible is to ask for an introduction instead of a referral. Most of your clients could be paying you fees and may not see the need to provide you with additional paying clients or they may feel awkward about promoting your business. However, people are much more comfortable when asked for an introduction. The fourth one I have is to know your IP. In this case, IP stands for ideal prospect. Now, I see so many salespeople out there making calls to prospects who aren't even necessarily a good fit for what they offer. You know, making cold calls is painful enough and there's no need to add to the misery. So do the effort up front and make sure the people that you're calling are good fits for what you sell. You know, this means making sure they have the right title, you know, they've got the right challenges, they have the right geography and the right ability to buy of you, whatever that you're selling. Now, moving on to number five, you know, give your prospect something of value. Now, a friend of mine used to say, you know, you just can't pick up the phone and expect somebody to buy off you. You know, they hardly know you from Adam. You have to earn their trust first before you even think about going for the sale. So what he used to do was give them something of value for free. And then when their relationship evolved into something more of a business partnership, he would then introduce some of the other products and services that he sold. Now, I know this is nothing new. Many companies give away plenty of freemium stuff nowadays. But if you're in a position to do something similar, then it's a great tool that you can use to make your calls with. Then finally, find an affiliate. Now, this is similar to getting an introduction. But instead of working with existing clients, you need to find companies that sell different products or services from you. However, make sure they do sell to the same type of customer. You know, you share the same sort of customer base. 
Because if you think about it, you know, you've spent years developing your customers and other companies have done exactly the same thing. So simply sell your assets and you're both going to grow. So there you are, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed the video. And as I always say, if you like the content to put out there, you know, please go ahead, click the follow, give me a like, and as always, good selling.